Some 5,426 Russian soldiers were killed and 10,958 others were wounded in the Kharkiv Front sector between May the 10th and September the 21st, the operational and tactical grouping of troops Kharkiv reported on Telegram. For comparison, the Western Coalition of the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, France, Germany, Italy and other countries lost a total of 3,500 military personnel killed in more than 20 years of the war in Afghanistan in 2001 to 2021, including 2,400 Americans. This is half of what Russia irretrievably lost in four months in Ukraine's Kharkiv Oblast alone. According to NV media outlet, in the same period, Ukrainian forces targeted 143 enemy tanks in the sector, destroying 69 of them. 77 Russian armored combat vehicles were damaged and 134 destroyed. In total, 1,464 enemy vehicles were damaged or destroyed, along with 762 artillery systems, 212 of which were destroyed. In addition, 4,458 UAVs of various types and 152 enemy ammunition depots were eliminated. Russia launched a new offensive on May the 10th in northern Kharkiv Oblast in a push that involved as many as 30,000 troops, according to a Ukrainian official. Russian forces have so far advanced less than 10 kilometers into Ukrainian territory and have not managed to seize control of Vovchansk a city with a pre-2022 population of around 17,000. The increase in losses is connected to Russia opening its new front in the Kharkiv region while maintaining the same pressure rate over the entire 1,000-kilometer front line in the east and south of Ukraine. Although this new approach has increased pressure on the front lines, an effective Ukrainian defense and a lack of Russian training reduces Russia's ability to exploit any tactical successes despite attempting to stretch the front line further. The Russians have lost most of their 138th motorized rifle brigade in the war-torn city of Vovchansk, with their 83rd and 157th tank regiments suffering considerable losses. Russia's 83rd Air Assault Brigade is also constantly suffering losses, sometimes several dozen people a day, which is confirmed by both prisoners of war and radio intercepts. The Russian military command is compelled to withdraw units from other areas, deploy reserves. At the same time, Ukraine's defense forces stressed that Russian troops still have a fairly serious offensive potential. They are regrouping, restoring their forces and logistics, and training assault groups in the rear. The Admiral Kuznetsov, the Russian Navy's sole aircraft carrier, has not been on duty for eight years, and it is increasingly unlikely that it will ever be on duty again. So in recent months, the Kremlin has, according to social media reports, transferred sailors from the decrepit ship to the army and sent them to fight in Ukraine, writes Forbes analyst David Axe. This is a startling revelation that highlights the Russian military's manpower crisis and also highlights the dilapidated state of the Russian Navy's largest warships, most of which are Cold War leftovers, the analyst wrote. That the Russians are apparently pulling men off the Kuznetsov is not surprising, David Axe notes, given that the Kremlin is going to extreme lengths to mobilize more troops to replace those killed in Ukraine. The alternative to stripping the ships of their crews could be a nationwide draft, which would be politically risky for Russian President Vladimir Putin's regime, he writes. Moreover, the decrepit 39-year-old Kuznetsov is unlikely to return to sea. In October 2018 the ship was seriously damaged when the dry dock where the aircraft carrier was undergoing repairs sank. Then, in December 2019 a fire broke out on the Kuznetsov itself. The Navy considered decommissioning the damaged ship, but then decided to repair and modernize it. The Kuznetsov was scheduled to return to sea in 2022. But in December 2022 a fire broke out on the ship. The ship was supposed to leave the port of Murmansk in northern Russia in the spring, for the first time in eight years. Instead, the vessel remains moored in Murmansk, the analyst notes. Any other navy might simply end the losses, write off the scorched ship and build a new one in its place. 
but Russian industry is probably incapable of building a direct replacement for the Kuznetsov or any other large warship which is why so many of the Russian Navy's large ships are former Soviet ships with decades of worn-out hulls and machinery, the analyst notes. As Pavel Luzin, a military expert at Perm University, points out, the main problem is in the engines. Ukrainian factories built most of the large marine engines of the Soviet fleet. Now the Ukrainians no longer export these engines to Russia, and the Russians are having a hard time setting up local production of similar equipment. Thus, according to analysts, at least some members of the Kuznetsov crew formed the so-called mechanized battalion frigate as part of the First Guards tank army. This battalion fought in the Kharkov region in northern Ukraine and then moved to the Pokrovsk region in the east. At the same time, Defense Express experts note that since the ship has been under repair for years, the crew members could have been offered to fight in Ukraine, and some could have been tempted by this offer. However, in their opinion, this does not mean that the Russians rode off to the shore as infantry the entire personnel of the only aircraft carrier.